So I was like, what if we did some interesting mix of 3D and 2D and I don't know, just tried to merge that uh, in an interesting way. So I just did some rough sketches of these theory things eventually and Steve was excited about it. So obviously you can tell via these designs, um, the idea behind them was to keep the 2D uh, really flat um, <clears throat> and sort of playful. My personal style, I like to keep it rough and gritty, uh, and kind of just hand drawn, but, but not too detailed. Um, and then in the 3D world, if I just pull this back up, have like sort of a photo reel almost type of a, like with the glass, especially you can tell, um, thing going on in the contrast between those things might, might be interesting is what we sort of thought. So yeah, so once I kind of just ironed out these designs, I guess to go through my process as to why I landed on these three things, um, the shapes of them are important and the colors of them. So when you get into um, merging or morphing, I guess is kind of a trendy term, um, things together, uh, the smart way or kind of what I've learned is that the closer you can keep things in terms of color, especially for me, and shape um, and obviously again I kept these overly simple so it wouldn't be all that extraordinarily difficult to do but just generally the the closer you can kind of keep so just for example between the pot here and the lamp you can kind of see right there just based on them being the same color there might be an opportunity to kind of have some fun making uh, or turning the the pot the actual pot itself into the base of this lamp and then I don't know just kind of go from there so that that was the original inception of the idea um this is the full rough um I so my process was like okay I'm not really sure what's going to be 3d um I think we'll kind of cross that bridge when we get there I ended up doing this so to break down the rough I opened a new file I took screenshots of all of my designs. I just sort of stuck them in here and kind of said, okay, how long do I feel like these could play for that, that wouldn't get daunting? And also that wouldn't be too jarring, so like too fast or too slow. And, and again, it's sort of a trial and error, but I landed on sort of like a second, so like 1.3 seconds or whatever you can kind of see here on the timeline. Um, and this is all I did. So I put the, I put one image in first. I started with the pot, uh, and then I drop in the, uh, the lamp and then I drop in, uh, the glass and I made sure that they were just the same length. Um, so the same amount of keyframes. So every, every one of these things, if you're not familiar is a keyframe. And then I drop, I just dropped the opacity on these so that I could sort of doodle over them or draw over them. So what it, what would be called I guess key poses, or this might even be an earlier stage thing, key poses. And again, just kind of working on the timing of that. And then if we move on, from there we find, so the, yeah, so the designs are still here, right? But you can just turn them off or on or whatever. And then here, obviously the lamp just sort of boom. So the idea in my head was like, okay, this pot is pretty similar to this top here. Um, and originally I thought maybe it could morph into the vase uh, or the bottom half of the of the lamp. But I think I ended up, if I'm, if I'm correct, yeah, I think I ended up taking it to the top here just because the shape of the vase was so close to the top. So essentially this is like a smear frame uh, or like a uh, exaggerated frame and then boom, it sort of just pops to the top. Um, and I knew I wanted to have those kind of fun, quick moments. Um, and then here we have it kind of at a skewed angle. And that was to prep myself to have this uh, top of the lamp or the lampshade do sort of a secondary motion or a follow through or whatever um, as it sort of settles. And we'll get into that in the next file. So, so to move on, so then, right, we have the exaggerated, then back to the, the lamp's normal designed uh, pose. 
and then another sort of exaggerated into the glass and this one was a little bit in my head it was harder to visualize so you can see i i didn't flesh that out as much um and then once i got to this point in the actual animation i sort of had to trial and error a little bit more maybe than this first transition because it was a little bit more clear initially to me and i think that that's important okay so this would be uh what's called in between so this is almost the final, the difference between this and the final rough was that I, I got rid of all the secondary or the uh, additional kind of movement. So for example, when this transitions here, there's a leaf in the final that kind of comes over and it overlaps the transition. Um, and then it kind of sets on fire. I thought of that in the very last minute, um, just, you know, playing around or whatever, just having fun. And again, the key behind selling this is the rotation of the glass and then even further because the water is in the center as well it sort of offset the water it doesn't necessarily always have to be super lifelike um as long as it feels okay well i think you i think you sell it incredibly well because it feels like the force follows through like i didn't even notice the first couple times seeing it that like the base of the plant or the vase um you know, becomes the top of the lampshade. So then it's basically, yeah, almost like a ease in, ease out fast through the middle. But as long as we can feel, feel that overlap and that follow through, you, you just feel it, right? You feel the energy, the force like follows through all the way. Like the start would be pretty linear and then it would ease into its pose here. And then this would be super quick. Uh, so this would probably be eased at like 100 or something. <laughs> I don't know, to try and speak after fixed terms with you guys. So the only difference between this and the last file that we just looked at was the final sort of secondary detail. So if you can mm -hmm. already see right here, this is actually some water left over from the last drops. So I had to kind of uh, go back into the very first frame and sort of put that back in so that the loop was continuous as opposed to it just as opposed to it just disappearing when we hit this the reason behind the the red or the blue or the black is just to differentiate which section which sections i'm animating um so this is going to kind of be transforming into the top part but the bottom part's not extraordinarily difficult to add in so i'm just going to keep that there I'm not, yeah. I'm, not a, I'm not an Adobe Animate expert, but like in that scenario, are you redrawing on each frame or are you reusing any existing strokes from the previous frame to like move things? Or are you just gonna freehand it on each frame? It's, it's a, the right answer is it's a mix. So this mm -hmm. is a, maybe a good frame to go over it. So you can see all these weird like glyphs and cuts and stuff. Um, a normal rough, if I hadn't like been chopping this up, let me see if I can just do sort of just a small thing, would just kind of look like a scribble or whatever. You wouldn't get all these weird like erase and whatever points. Mm. And the reason for that is I'm using the lasso tool a lot. Mm. So it's something like this and then I'll move portions around. And then if it's like, oh, that placing looks maybe okay, I'll try to kind of go in and fill in other parts. So to answer your question, I think it's, I, I really think it's a mix most of the time. And that goes back to kind of, it's the same thing with these little details. I mean, it's waiting to do them until after just because um, if you try and do them all at once, I, I think maybe it's too many things to focus on or. Um, yeah. And you got to get that overall timing before you. Yeah. Or else you're just changing everything as you, as you kind of block it out. Right. Totally. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. So. Uh, that's kind of the idea be behind uh, breaking it down into into what you see as blue, uh, red, and and black. So, mm. so this little extra leaf that kind of comes off, I thought was a cool detail that would mm. uh, tie the two together. So this is just another moment, along with what we talked about earlier. Like this lampshade would be the follow through that would sort of sell the transition. This leaf is just an extra sprinkle, right? It's just an extra cherry on top of like. How do, I, how do I make these convincing that they're in the same world? To, to, again, I, along with that same thing, it might be cool if I had some water that, that fell out. One, because I think that probably would happen again if this was in real life. And two, it helps to sell it when we loop. So, so in a way, it, it makes the looping not as obvious as it would be otherwise. <laughs>